Hi, my name is uh, Franco Sancho. I keep on uh, recording different videos regarding marketing, qualitative marketing research with Atlas TI. <clears throat> in this case, in practice five, we are going to talk about the conceptual or contextual analysis in Atlas TI. We are going to see different how to do, use and, and, and do codes and families in Atlas TI. So, <clears throat> as usual, As usual, uh, well, one second. I'm going to, I'm going to open uh, the document, and we are going to continue with the explanations. Oh, what? Well, no problem. We can open it. It in here. Okay, the slides in English. Open with, and the practice you have to submit by the end. Well, you will have two weeks to do the the submission. So <clears throat> as usual, we are going to explain a little bit what we are going to do by using some slides. And afterwards, we are going to um, to do it in the program, in the software Atlas TI. So in this case, uh, practice five is the contextual level uh, in the discourse analysis. We are going to see what contextual or conceptual that are not exactly the same, but in this case, we are going to use them as, as synonyms. Uh, okay, what, what we're going to do in the contextual or conceptual level, we are going to try in some way to associate the different quotations we have done in practice number four with uh, <clears throat> different codes that are related to the theoretical constructs, the theoretical ideas that uh, constructions that we are going to analyze in, in any stat. In our case, remember, the concepts or the con uh, uh, concept we are going to talk about are <clears throat> customer experience from different point of view. And we are going to use also the idea or the process of customer journey map. So in this case, we are going to work in more in, more in detail compared to practice number four. Remember that in practice number four, I, I told you to use as many quotations as uh, you need it to highlight that those sentences coming from the discourse analysis, the discourse that could be interesting. Now we are going to be more selective because we are going to associate these ideas with the categorical concepts. So uh, an, an analogy that can be useful in this case, contextual analysis that could be compared to gemstones. Once a screening and extraction work has been done, what we did in the previous a practical session, we continue with, uh, with the work of categorization and valorization. We are going to assign these sentences, not all of them, but at least the ones that are useful for our, uh, uh, or related to our objectives, we are going to categorize them, okay? So we are going to categorize them in terms of, uh, by using codes and we are going to associate them by using, uh, well, by uh, uh, grouping them into families. So coding uh, is an operation that is performed simultaneously with data reduction. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes we select a word or a short phrase because, because it has a symbol or is re related in some way to the objective or the concepts uh, of the, of the that we are uh, stu uh, studying. So uh, we can expand also the codes with, by including also uh, additional information. So let's go into see what we are doing. This is where we are. These are the three levels ex explained in practice number three. The textual level, that is the one that we saw uh, last week. We use quotations or quotes to underline all the sentences that we thought that could be interesting. In the second level, in the contextual level, now we are going to, to try to understand what they are saying. What is the meaning of the things that the individual is saying? So by understanding the discourse, we are going to try to associate these ideas with the different concepts that we are studying. We are going to jump a little bit the slides in order to see some examples. And in this way, way you are going to understand better what we are going to study. And next week, or in some weeks, we are going to study the organizational or interpretive level. In this case, we are going to try to see if there are relationships or that we can find relationships between the different codes by creating networks, but this will be done in the future. 
So this is the, um, the different uh, steps in this course analysis, in qualitative research this course analysis, the first stage, the limitation of the object of the study, second stage field work, when we design uh, um, the different steps that we are going to follow to gather the information and when we actually gather the information. In the third stage, that is the one that we are going to do with Atlas TI, uh, last week in the last practice, in practice number two, we were in the pre experiential perspective and we code at discretion as much as possible. Now, in the green one, analytical perspective, we are going to selectively code. So we are going to select this kind of, this quotations we use or quotes we use in the previous section and we are going to try to assign these <clears throat> codes to different concepts next week's interpretive uh, perspective we are going to try to find relationships so um let's going to jump this and go to the ideas that at the end of the, the examples at the end of the of the slides because i think it's better that you see first of all examples I'm taking into account what, what is our objective. Uh, we are going to understand more why. So remember that this is these are examples coming from last year uh, projects. And as you can see, um, from one perspective or one approach is the customer journey map. When we are trying to analyze customer experience, we know that there are some stages before the individual uh, experience the service or in this case the service during the service and after the service so anything that we ask and any answer that the individual is giving to us can be related to these different levels different stages so for example i can have uh, uh, codes like before for example information recommendations motives to go, transportation indications. All these codes, as you see here, can be related, their codes can be related to families, previous consider considerations before the visit and the arrival to, in this case, to the thematic part. So all these codes can be related to a family, in this case, customer journey map before. The same happened with customer journey map during. There are some codes, these are in, in, in Spanish, but I can translate it to you. Entry, um, tickets, stuff, um, uh, facilities, additional services, all these codes. These are just, a, this is just an example. You, you can create your own codes. It can be related to customer journey map during, in this case, in the thematic part. And afterwards, after the visit, we can have some codes like, for example, learning, expectancies, post recommendation, and improvements. So in this case, this group used it in the, in the first approach. Remember that there are many approaches. The codes they use are these, and the families are before, during, and after. As you see, this is a frequency table. As you, when, when you finish doing the, the coding, you need to do a frequency table to see what is the absolute frequency, how many times uh, <clears throat> each of the families are named, are uh, appear in the different transcriptions, and of course, how many times the codes, absolute and relative frequency. The second approach is the customer experience generators. Remember in our case, there were different customer experience generators, a spatial environment, stuff, processes, service delivery. In this case, and there was one more that which was physical evidence. In this case, this group has only considered th four of them, both for, from the sense point of view and also from the feeling point of view. This is more related to the to this, uh, senses, uh, how you smell, you view, you touch, you whatever, things that you can, could uh, say uh, that is related to the senses. And in the second family, related to the feelings, things that you felt uh, inside yourself. So these are this, uh, this is a different approach, the customer experience generators. And the final uh, family can be the different levels in the customer relationship or the customer experience in the relationship between the customer and the company. In this case, 
Remember there were three levels, transactional, experiential, and relational. And in this case, they have created different codes related to each of the different uh, levels. So in this case, we have four, uh, three approaches, customer journey map, a customer experience generators, and the different levels. So you can create at least three levels or three type, or, or, or you can create three types of codes and families. So let's go into see how to create the codes and families. It's not difficult. So in, my, uh, in this case, we are going, we are going to use uh, to categorize. It's a process or a conceptual organization of ideas. We are gonna, going to organize ideas in concepts. Uh, as I have shown you before, we have three approaches with different concepts and we are going to classify the ideas into these concepts. So we need to be very selective and we need to do it carefully. This is for the for this is why you're going to have two weeks to do this practice instead of one. Uh, of course, researchers' experience is very important. You need to be uh, be used and know the, the 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 how to do the task or at least to train to improve. I imagine well, you are going to do it with one personal interview at the beginning, and you are going to train yourself and you are going to improve the way you are, you do things. Of course, you need to know the, the state of the art in this case. Uh, you need to know the, the organization of concepts you have seen uh, before, I have shown you. And of course, a good textual analysis, the things you did in practice one are very important, quotes and notes. Taking all this together, we can categorize or we can code properly. This is an example. I have shown you some examples before. You can read them. You can read it in the video if you want. Uh, another material that can be useful for you is the Atlas TI uh, 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 user guide and reference. Here you have, and there is one, um, well, there is one section here you can see where they explain how to code and all the different things, maybe more in detail. Uh, in the case of Spanish, says this is another reference we, we usually use. You can also check, it's a free book. Okay, there are three types of codes. Open coding is when we select a sentence and we create only one, uh, sorry, we, we create the, by hand, we write the code. So the first time we are going to write the code and the next times we are going to have this code to encode by list. So we are going to select a code that we used before and use it in this way we ensure that um, we ensure that uh, we use exactly the same words in order to code. Another interesting thing of open coding that you can code the same idea with different codes. Imagine that one idea happened before. So we would put customer journey map before, but maybe this idea is also related to the staff, to the individual that, that gives you the service. So we can code this, the same idea by using two codes. The second one would be customer experience, uh, stuff. MBBO coding is not recommended, or at least I don't recommend it, because basically it's assigned a code, uh, select a sentence and assign this sentence as a code. And this time, sometimes is too much long. And fast coding is <clears throat> coding by using the drop down list that we are going to see later. So, how to prefer, how to do the codes? We can do it by using the menu, the actions in the menu. We can do, we use the drop down menu and we can do many things. So, how to do it? First of all, we underline the sentence. We click on the right bottom and we say code. We, 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 we put code. And there are three ways to do it, as I told you, four ways open coding, whatever. We would choose, for example, open coding where we write the thing we want. For instance, this is the table. We are going to write, for example, it's C J M underscore, for example, before, and we are going to see the code at the at the uh, right side of the table. So this is the idea to check. If we create, for example, two codes for the same text, we can have the the two codes together. This is a very good thing because if we have many the primary documents, 
we can um, uh, summarize the information. We can say, okay, select me all the different sentences that are related to uh, customer experience stuff. And it's going to extract from the different documents and put all the information together and so on. Um, and what about families? Remember that all the codes could be associated to families. Uh, because for example, the, what I showed you before, uh, all these codes are things that happened before. So I can, how can I associate all these codes that I created in the first uh, moment with, for example, a family. Let's see how to do it. It's very easy. Well, as, uh, as I, in the same uh, way than before, we can use Atlas TI, the, the reference. There is a, there is an explanation. Also in the book of, of uh, Juan Muñoz Justicia and Miguel Sagun Padilla. And we are going, what are we going to do? We are going to create group of elements. In the, this case, group of codes. How to do it? Oh, another interesting thing is that we can group codes, we can create many groups of codes. And some code can belong to different families. It's not, they are not mutually exclusive. It's interesting to know. So how to create it? We go to the, to the menu in the, in, the, in, the, in the top here, codes, as you see, families. Let's see. Codes, families, it's in Spanish, but it's easy to understand. And once, once we have done this, it opens a window. In this case, we write the name of the family. For example, CJM underscore before. Once we have done this, the manager, we open the code manager, the family code manager. And it's going to open the different uh, families that we have created before and all the codes that we have created before at the beginning. So the only thing I have to do is to select the family here at the top and a drag, select the codes that I think are interesting or are related to that family and drag them to the left. In this way, I can have, I can create a family. So we will have a family like this. For example, all these codes are going to be part of the customer journey uh, map during, or as they, they said, customer journey map park, thematic park. So I hope you have, uh, well, let's see, there is another example. Here we have some uh, information, in this case, only related to the previous experience, during experience and after experience. And in this case, the group that doing the study regarding Aqualandia have considered that these uh, six, um, these six uh, codes, access, entry, price, arrival, whatever, are uh, related to previous experience. These are related to the during experience and after experience. So I hope you have understood the practice. I'm going to, go to explain to you briefly what you need to submit by this week. Practice five, therefore, in this practice five, we have explained what is conceptual or contextual analysis. The first thing you need to do, and also explain, is to create a code book. Because you need to know which are the codes you are going to use. These are the ones that this group uh, uh, used, but this is for a thematic, uh, a, a thematic park, and maybe it's not adapted to your study. So the first thing is to think about the codes and the families. From the customer journey map approach, customer experience generator approach, and levels of customer experience. Once you have uh, created your code book, you need to start coding the uh, primary document. So the first thing you need to do is to create the code books with the codes and the families. And you need to deliver, deliver this in a Word document. This, number one, and number three. In the second one, you need to continue coding all the uh, Primary documents, remember that you need to do for the final assessment, five in the interviews and one focus group. Um, well, um, so continue coding. If you remember, if you work in, uh, in a collaborative, collaborative where, way that some people code some uh, primary documents and some other 
code others, you need to merge or to fusionar uh, a hermetic unit. If you do so, you need to explain this in the, the Word document. Once you have um, code, created all the code and all the families, you can create a summary table similar to the one that I show you here, these tables, these three tables. You need to create, to create your own tables with the absolute frequency and the relative frequency. And also, as usual, you need to deliver the hermeneutic unit. In this case, with the name of the group, group and practice five. Uh, we have uh, seen this practice on, by Monday 14th of March, and you have two, two uh, weeks to do the submission. So for um, Monday 28th, March 2022, you need to send the DMDs by mail and please uh, try to include all the things you need to deliver the amenity unit and also a Word document with the uh, uh, the rest of the explanation. So I hope you have uh, understood the things that we do in context of our conceptual analysis, and we are going to continue in following practices with the rest of the analysis in Atlas DI.